so much for your comments under the last video. There were just so many really sweet and touching comments about, um, you know, the, the crazy situation I found myself in. So, um, you know, you're not here when I look at your comments, so you can't see me. Sometimes I wish you could see me when I'm reading them because um, I'm often exclaiming out loud, you know, and saying, oh, they're so lovely. <laughs> because you are so thank you so much for that i read in reuters magazine online that the thai government have given tourists three months until the end of july now that they've extended our visas so um so that might be the good news but the thai immigration office haven't um they haven't confirmed that this is true yet, so I'm still waiting on the edge of my seat. But if it is, then hopefully I'm not gonna be going to jail anytime soon, and so the backgrounds can stay lovely. You can see nice flowers instead of um, my jail mates. We've had a bit of a break from talking about abusive people because um, after the coronavirus, got worse I thought that it would be nice to to just um, talk about gentler things you know and um, and also we have just been looking at Anissian for a long time and he's quite a disturbing character but I had three people email me yesterday all sending me the same link about a guy called James Soroka and when I looked at the footage, I thought he would be a really good one to talk about because he illustrates um, different types of abuse really well. In this video, I'm going to look at gaslighting and that's going to lead us on to looking at learned helplessness because the way that Caitlin reacts is also something that I think would be useful to talk about. So first of all, let's have a look at a clip from one of these videos that James Soroka has been putting up on Periscope. And that she made, we had a conversation about some other stuff and she told, she filled me in about some, uh, what was it, H something? Human growth, HGH you were telling me, something with HGH you were telling me about? Um, human growth hormone you were telling me about. I never told you about human growth hormone. You're lying to me right now, cause you're scared. I said something about the deodorant on the live stream. Eggs. Donating. Oh. oh yeah. He didn't forget. You're just afraid they won't talk about it. You could have just said, no, I don't no, want to no, talk about no, it. No, I, I you didn't, genuinely didn't remember? I didn't remember. Okay. I thought you were talking about something with food. Do you want to tell them now that I look like an idiot? <laughs> I made myself look like an idiot. Will you save me? <laughs> sure. Thank you. Um... Yeah, just the, uh, the, with, um, when we're looking into options for extra cash, that they say, you know, like, oh, you can sell your eggs and then you can make lots of money. But I looked into it and it is definitely, if you're doing it, it is definitely more than just for money. It is an act of love because you have to inject yourself with, um, all these hormones to make, you know, um, I forget the exact terminology, but things in your body um, like swell up so that they can harvest the eggs and it's, it's painful and it messes with your hormones and and it's it's a really beautiful thing to do out of love, but it's not for me. Katie, yeah. you're really going to have to learn to stop lying because you're destroying people with what you just said. Wait a minute, who is she destroying? You know you lied just through your teeth to protect yourself from people. And you just hurt a lot of people, so we're going to go ahead and shut down. She hurt a lot of people? How did she do that? was expecting a reaction but she hasn't given one yet she's shocked and confused and she's not saying anything 
Watch his expression again as he waits for her to react. I will personally not do it because I don't think it's right to put your body through that. Now she said she wouldn't do it, she wouldn't donate her eggs. And I think she's saying that because that's what she thinks he wants her to say. She's been told she's lying. So she's thought back for quite a few seconds there in a really confused state about what she might have lied about. And as we'll find out later, she hasn't lied about anything. But she's tried to think of what it is that's annoying him. Has she missed something that she should have said? And, um, and she has told him, it looks like, that this is something she wouldn't do. So she thinks, oh, I better confess that then. And she feels forced into doing that. So this might have been something that she had said in private that maybe she didn't want to share. You know, if she'd wanted to share that, she probably would have done. But now she feels obligated to give up that piece of information. So she doesn't have this boundary, you know, she's not allowed this boundary, you know, according to him. And so she's not allowing herself to have it either. Hey. Yeah. I'm going to go, I'm going to go tell people the truth. I'm going to have a conversation with people about the truth. You know what? You can lie at college, okay? You go do go you go lie at college. Say it's because I put you on the spot. Did I? Did I make you uncomfortable? Or did I start talking about something that's comfortable to talk about? If you weren't comfortable to talk about it in private, you shouldn't have talked about it in private. Or in public, you shouldn't have talked about it with me in private. Because if you haven't noticed, my life is pretty much public. He's realized that she hasn't felt comfortable to share things maybe in the way she did before when they were in private. And, um, but he isn't okay with that. He's not allowing her to have moments of privacy with him. Everything has to be shared. And he shamelessly says this, you know, he explains that this is what the rules are, that she's not allowed to have any privacy. But not only is she not allowed to have privacy, she's also supposed to know that. She's meant to know that this is the rule, that if she tells him something in private, he's going to broadcast it. And that's quite handy because it means that when she is the victim, he can deny that and make himself out to be the victim. So he doesn't have to feel the shame of abusing her. He's clearly crossing a boundary here. He's pushing her to um, say something that she's not comfortable with saying in public. And he's dressing it up as if she has broken a rule. And I have every, I have every comfort to talk about the truth in public. And if you plan to just talk about the truth in private and then lie to them in public, it's going to fuck up their life. You're the one that's okay with that because you want to protect yourself. You might think I'm the fool, but when you end up stuck with $100 million and nobody on your side, except a whole bunch of people who will settle for a lie, you're just a narcissist. Why would she end up with $100 million? What? He, he's coming up with stuff that doesn't even make any sense, and it all finishes up with, she is a narcissist. So a lot of people at this point will have told him that he is, and he's projecting that onto her in the same way as he projects his shame onto her throughout these conversations. As long as she feels that she's the narcissist, he doesn't have to be. I'm not doing this shit. All right. So the fact is they pump you up with human ho growth hormones and it totally affects the way that your body operates. So women out there, it's not fair to you. It's not fair to you. And while I fight for her equality, she just lied to your face. 
And you can say that I'm throwing her under the bus, but I don't even care if that's throwing her under the bus because I love her enough to not let her lie to you. In other words, I'm humiliating and publicly shaming her because I love her and I'm such a good person. So he's trying to manipulate us into thinking well of him, no matter how he behaves towards her. I'm not doing that. No. If it comes up, it comes up. I'm not going to bring these things up on purpose. I don't want them to be the centerpiece of my content. I definitely love her. I do. And I love myself enough not to let her lie to others using my platform. He's accused her of some serious stuff. He's said that she's destroying people, that she's hurting people, she's a narcissist. All of this is what he is becoming known for because people are watching the way he treats her. So he's accused her of all of this and why. She's saying that when you donate eggs, you have to pump yourself up with hormones, that it's an unpleasant thing to have to go through. And that's what he thinks as well. So why is he so outraged? I'm not gonna let her lie to others using my platform. Absolutely not. I worked very hard to have the freedom and the confidence to tell the truth about life. He has worked hard to have the confidence to be honest, and yet all he's doing is playing games. He's not being honest at all. And nobody's going to stop me from doing that, not even Kate. And, uh, and she is standing in his way. She's stopping him from being this good moral person. And he's not having any of it because he's just too good a guy for that. A narcissist relies on a constant stream of validation. So he's constantly trying to get that from us. He's justifying himself and explaining what a great, kind, wise, mature and ethical person he is so that we will agree, you know, and say, yes, you are, you're really great, so that he can keep getting his narcissistic supply. And I love Kate very much, but if Kate wants to lie to protect herself against something that she doesn't need protection from, then what's she going to do when she's actually in danger? So now he's suggesting that he's protecting her safety by stopping her from lying. And yet we still don't know what this lie is because he hasn't told us. Why didn't he tell us? Wouldn't that be the first thing you'd do if you were really that outraged that someone had lied? Wouldn't you immediately tell people what the truth was? It seems to me that he wants to distract us. All of this drastic talk that's gone on for minutes now seems to me to be um, in order to distract us from the truth. And the truth is that he's outraged that she hasn't said something in the way he wants her to say it about egg donation. Well, let me tell you, she's already thrown me under the bus a million times over. And I'm finally willing to throw her under the bus if she's going to throw me under the bus. He continues to try to justify himself to preempt what people are going to say about him because he knows he's in danger of being judged for the way he's just treated her. I've been hurt a lot too, but nobody cares about that. But I'm going to let you know I don't need you to care about that because I'm not in this for feelings. I'm not in this for my own feelings. I do care about my own feelings, but I care about yours too. And I care about you surviving enough to not let someone who is a very, very good liar tell you something that she said the exact opposite offline, saying how bad it was because it pumps your body with those drugs. And then she says to you that it would be a great act of love. Oh my God. Finally, we hear the lie, except it isn't really a lie. Let's hear what she said again. The with them, when we're looking into options for extra cash, they say, you know, like, oh, you can sell your eggs and then you can make lots of money. But I looked into it and it is definitely, if you're doing it, it is definitely more than just for money. It is an act of love because 
you have to inject yourself with um, all these hormones to make, you know, um, I forget the exact terminology, but things in your body um, like swell up so that they can harvest the eggs and it's, it's painful and it messes with your hormones and and it's it's a really beautiful thing to do out of love but it's not for me she's talked about how unpleasant it is what your body has to go through and how it's not something that she would do so what's the difference between that and his opinion they seem to think the same way about it. Well, the difference is that she says it's an act of love. What I think is happening here is that he is jealous of her because she doesn't have contempt for people who donate eggs. And this shows her to be quite a good person, you know, a kind person. And that sets her apart from him. Narcissists have something called a mistrust abuse schema, which is um, a way of thinking that encourages you to think people are hiding something or they want to lie to you um, or they just have a darker side than, than the one that you can see, you know. They tend to be distrustful people. And so I think he does think that she has this darker side to her that she's not admitting to. He's constantly presenting himself in a really dishonest light, you know, and even when he's being purely selfish, he's pretending he's acting for her good. But, um, but he has decided that she is betraying him because she's not admitting to this darker side. And he feels jealous because, um, because people will think well of her when they see that she has admiration for people who want to donate eggs. There's nothing um, judgmental about that view. And so people will see her in a really positive light. And so that means that there is still this gulf between them that he still has to carry this shame about what different people they are and how differently they'll be perceived by the audience. If she had shown contempt, he'd feel so much better because he'd think, oh good, now everyone can see that we're the same, that you're not any better than me. And you know, I'm not a bad person because you think the same way as me. So I think that all of this anger has come from jealousy, that he's jealous about the way that people perceive her. In the next video, I'm gonna look at some more gaslighting from this guy because I want to take a closer look at the way Caitlin responds to it. And then we can start to talk about learned helplessness. So I'll see you in the next video and I'm gonna put it out on Friday.